evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for popping by. Um, today I'm on the scrounge for advice, if I may. So, what happened earlier on today, I was driving along to the garden centre. I noticed a couple of boxes and a table. So I sort of screeched the car to a halt, knocked on the door. May I have your table, please? And it was like, free, take it, take it. I was like, lovely, thank you so much. So I thought, actually, these cases, I'll probably find a use for them. So I just sort of chucked them in. I didn't really have a look at them at the time. Um, I had a job to do. So carried on to the garden centre, compost seeds later, another video on that later on. Um, and go back to mummy's, veggie dinner, bit of gravy, lovely, beautiful. And then I sat there and I thought about these suitcases. And so I went and got one in. And I was basically sort of thinking, how can we clean these up? You know, so mummy got the brass out. So we gave it a good rub on the thingies and I could actually see a name. And the name was Chini. So I was like, oh, I said, mother, Google Chini suitcase. So she did, and she thought it was a sort of a 60s suitcase. I think it's actually more of a 40s. And when I found that out, I was so excited. Um, so here it is, the Chini suitcase. They're both Chinis, but this is the smaller one. Um, it's in such a fantastic nick. Now, the reason why I think it's 40s is because other examples that I've found online say that they're 40s that look pretty similar. But also with the 60s suitcases, they're more curved around the edges. That, that kind of style was the, for the 60s. Whereas this is a very basic, made out of cardboard suitcase. So I'm thinking utility. And on the inside of all these 1940s cases, they have check print. And this is no exception. And it's in such brilliant nick. So I've had the Brasso on the gold, these things, padlocks, whatever they are. I've had this stuff called elbow grease on the top and all of these black markings I thought they might have been um, sort of a tar or something but actually it turns out that it's the actual cardboard that this blue pattern is stuck onto so you have to be very gentle with it. Um, my question is how do I look after it? Um, so for a start with the with the um, padlocks I don't think it's, mummy doesn't think it's proper brass because they've not come up really true. So is there a way of getting some gold enamel or is there something out there that's going to buff these up nice? Same with this. Um, I mean, this handle is in perfect nick. It feels really solid to hold. It's fantastic. The only tiny thing that's sort of, other than the, the general, you know, scuff, um, which, you know, getting on and off trains. <laughs> that sort of thing travels the only thing that's that's actually really wrong with it is that the stitching has gone on these two stitches and that this is sort of coming out ever so tiny I thought maybe if I got a knife and sort of oiked it back under would that be the best the best way of going about it I don't know but I was so so chuffed with it and I think it suits me don't you but I don't know, is it a ladies? Is it a gentleman's? I have no idea. Um, I think I've looked on the adverts and there's, there's, a, there's at least a few examples of these kind of cases being made for people in the Navy, being made for people in the military. Um, but this is in such good nick. I, I don't know what life story is behind this. I really want to find out so I may go back and knock on the door am I brave enough I think I must I've got to be I've got to be our boys were stuck in the trenches they were stuck on the on the warships 
I think I can be brave enough to go and knock on a door and ask someone about their story. So, yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah. So when I find that story out, I will let you know. But it looks like it, the house looked like it was um, to an old boy. You know, it was all very sort of dated. So, yeah, it's their. Uh, it's um. It was. I think it was his son was sort of just clearing out really. You know, but I cannot believe he's thrown such a beautiful suitcase away. Um, I don't think I can clean up the inside at all. Um, it's really delicate, delicate paper. I mean, this is literally just a cardboard box. You know, it's so delicate. This is incredibly thin paper that's 80 years old. It's got to be. It's got to be. So, yeah. Um... Mummy suggested that I fill it with books or magazines or something to try and sort of shape out the the box because it seems that, say like there's a dent there, so to shape it back into being a properly formed rectangle. Um, I was thinking, you know, do I need to put any mothballs in there, any damp balls in there to try and help with the smell and... Because it's got a slight width, but it's not terrible. Um, but, I mean, how do I preserve an 80-year-old cardboard box, really? But, I mean, the stitch, the stitching on it is still just absolutely immaculate. It just... And the actual covering is in such decent nick. So, yeah. How do I preserve it, chaps? And mummy also thought, like, if, if I put put it into, a, you know, a pillowcase, if I make a sort of case for it, a pillowcase, would that help it or would that hinder it? Um, is the best place to put it in a cold room or in a warm room? On top of the wardrobe? You know, under the bed? Like, where am I best? How do I look after this? It's, I've got to preserve it somehow. So, yeah. So... Any advice, gratefully received on that one, chaps, on how I can buff it up and look after it so it gets another 80 years. Um, if I can do it, I might take it on my holidays. But so for the other suitcase and the table, so, whoop, forgive me, but this is the table that caught my eye, you know. I thought if I put my trays of um, veggie plants on there, it'd be, be useful. But yes, I like the legs on that. But this is the other Sheeny suitcase. And you can see the, the name Sheeny a bit better on this. Well, you might not be able to see it because it's because of the light. But, oh, I've broke the handle. Oh, dear. It's not a good start, is it? Um, but yeah, if you can see Sheeny. So this obviously has silver brass, silver doodars so again right here we are so i've this strap is obviously seen slightly better days so i wonder how i can repair that but sadly i can't get into this because i haven't got the key it's locked i don't know how to get in you see the um on this on the other one bear with me a moment on the other one so how mummy showed me was that you sort of press it down this thing goes out you press it down and then hold on this moves across there we are you press it down and then click and it's in place and they both work and I just think that is amazing so across press it down Ooh. across press it down and let it release there we are i love it i absolutely i love it i just love it like i can't ah i'm so excited how much i love it okay so anyway so i can't get in this one chaps so um yeah but i don't know what this date would be i'm thinking is it 60s i'm i think this is a trunk case because it's mahoosive in comparison I don't know, is it 60s or is it 40s? Is it the same era? So, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I'm moving fast, but I was just, I'm so excited. 
But yeah, there's the, the size in the difference. So was that a trunk for his wartime stuff? I, I, I want to know this. I want to know this. I've just got to pluck up the courage to go and knock on the door. I'll do it. I'll do it one day. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but yeah. And then, so lastly, um, now that, now that I'm, we're, we're, we're chatting, we're catching up, a few of you have asked me to show you how to do the paper bags. So while I'm here and I've got a trunk to work on, let's do it. So, ha <laughs> ha you take your sheet of newspaper, one sheet will do, at the bottom you fold it to about an inch or so in depth, so there's your inch, then you're going to turn it over, like so, now you're going to take, you're going to sort of in your eye, you're going to split it into three. So you're going to fold this third across like that. And whoop, it goes. And then you're going to bring this third over like so. And whoop. And then you're going to tuck this top third into that middle top third. There we are. So those two are tucked together all nicely. Spin it round. Turn it over. So you're now at this point where it's both stable on either side. Halve it. that and then just simply took this edge into give it a bit of a jiggle 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 and there we are that is literally how simple it is one bag deceptively spacious but I just want to say thank you so much for joining me in my chaoticness, but you know, this is how I get when I get excited. I can't help it. Bye.